and welcome to the Gastric Health Show. My name is Dawn Boxel and I am your host. We are back for another episode of the Gastric Health Show with a new topic and same type of theme, but giving you solutions to maybe some of the things you're struggling with or hoping to overcome. So just a few housekeeping things first. These podcasts are not intended for medical advice. They are for educational purposes only. We would love for you to share these podcasts with your friends in any of those secret Facebook groups that you're involved in that we are not. And um, just a legitimate caring for people. So if, if we have a solution that you have maybe been in a Facebook thread on that our solution could be a potential for one of your friends or um, other members of the Facebook groups that you are in or just somebody that you truly care about, feel free to share it with them. We would love for you to help get the word out that there are other options, that there are alternatives that maybe, you know, conventional medicine, medicine hasn't hasn't maybe even explored with your uh, this person or these people, um, and maybe these will be some solutions that they can um, implement into their life or try as a strategy to help get their health back. So share away, and we would love it. And um, we finished our spring 30-day back on track class. We had a fabulous time. We are sharing different members their successes and their opinions of what the class is like. And our next class for the fall is September 17th. And we are excited for the 10 day free challenge. The free 10 day back on track challenge will be on September 17th. And we are excited for all of you to join us if you are kind of off track on your eating, your sleep, your exercise, taking your supplements, or just in life, you know you're off. And you need a program to help you kind of refocus and get things back in the the right order. We would love for you to do our free 10 day uh, challenge and and see what it's like. And then we'll be doing a 30 day class after that so you can stay tuned on the exact dates on that one that will will be coming so we're excited to share all this with you we have updated the 10-day program and and that will be um, released this fall so um, stay tuned for that make sure you register on our website wlsguthealth.com and get registered for the free 10-day challenge now today's topic seven surprising tricks to get you back on track. So these are some strategies that will maybe help you think out of the box a little bit. Some are pretty common, some are not. And some might make you um, think, at least that's my goal. So unfortunately, we live in a world that can easily get you off track. We have schedules that are overbooked, so you don't have time to cook. And there are fast food and convenient packaged foods available for you for every meal, and it's available in minutes. And with marketing promising or, you know, kind of elaborating that they can provide health and it does seem believable and it seems perfect for what your life is like plus you know things like major life events maybe you get married or you lose a job or you lose a family member or you have some some health setbacks you know just any any major life events like that can get you off track because your routine is off and sometimes you can't control that and um, but there are strategies to get you through so you're not so far off track that you can't find your way back on your own so so these are things that we're all dealing with everybody's dealing with this constant um, chaos of life so you are not alone you are not broken your pouch is not broken 
And guess what? You don't need a revision. You just need to um, focus on a few things. Personally, I like people to pick one thing that they're going to focus on, get good at that, and then you're going to tackle another thing. So if you're going, if you know you need to clean up your diet, you know you need to exercise and take all your vitamins and drink all your water and you know you're supposed to all, all do all those things, you know that. Um, but if you're not doing any of them, waking up on Monday morning and saying, okay, I'm gonna start doing everything correctly now, it is a little overwhelming. So instead of saying I'm gonna do the whole package deal, you might want to ease into some of that and do one of them at a time. Maybe you're gonna work on cleaning up your diet or maybe you're gonna work on um, you know, starting to walk or do some type of movement a couple times a week. Regardless, you pick something that you can focus on for you know, several weeks and then you can start implementing as, um, as it seems right. And you, you'll know you're the one who's living it and each person is going to be different on how quickly you, you, you know, add new things. But the bottom line is, you know, you are human and life is never going to be perfect. And we all have to get back on track when life throws us these curveballs. So, so don't feel shame, don't feel guilt, don't feel like you've failed because you haven't, you are human. And just because you had weight loss surgery doesn't mean life isn't gonna happen and you're not gonna have troubles that will get you off track. So, so have some, give yourself some grace and be patient with yourself and um, allow yourself to go through this. And I promise you, if you really do put in the effort and the work, you will be a better person for it because it's helping you grow and change. And I know most of us have probably heard the saying of, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying. And, and that is to somewhat degree true. So, so we always have to keep challenging ourselves and keep pushing and, and um, learning from our mistakes. So maybe we do it wrong once or twice, but maybe the third time we get it right. Um, maybe we get it wrong 30 times and then finally 31 we get it right. So it doesn't matter how many times, how stubborn or hard-headed you are with something, it really doesn't matter. It just matters that you keep trying and you keep putting in the effort and knowing that you want the results, that you are willing to not give up and keep moving through that. And that's probably the most important thing. So, so let's go over these seven tricks or tips or whatever you want to think of it as, but some seven areas that can help you refocus and get yourself going in the right direction. So one can be food journaling, and this shouldn't be a surprise to you. Um, although it is painful to have to log the foods that you're eating, it is very eye-opening. And I do encourage people to do this, you know, if you can do it longer than a week, I think that's awesome. But if you can at least commit to a week, um, and maybe it's just you commit to a meal. I'm committing to breakfast today to write down what I had to eat. And then, um, then you go another few hours and then maybe you can commit to that snack and jot it down. And then maybe another few hours and you can commit to the lunch. So you gotta find what works for you, but at least start jotting down what you're eating. And it, when you put it on paper, sometimes it's very evident um, the position that you're in. You can understand why it is that you're struggling um, with staying on track. Sometimes it can say, you know, the evidence will be, mm, I'm eating pretty good. I don't understand why I'm having issues. Um, so that means you need to look in other areas. So, so food journaling, journaling is very powerful. There's tons of research to back this up that it does help in success with weight loss. It does help in, uh, in your ability to stay on track with 
um, making good choices with food. The second one is to make a plan. Get your strategy figured out before you start. So I, this I will say it's I've heard this many times. So you know they come in um, to to see the dietitians because they're off track and they want to get back on track. So their strategy is they're going to start tomorrow. Tell me what I need to do and I'm starting tomorrow. And my strategy for them is usually a little different. I want them to do a few things first before they start. My strategy is usually you're going to start two to three or two to four weeks after our visit because you need time. Sometimes you got to clean out the pantries, clean out the refrigerators, and um, get rid of the stuff that is keeping you off track. So I always encourage you to make a meal plan and get a strategy of, of what you're going to be eating for the next at least um, two weeks. That's usually my goal for my patients is to make a meal plan of what you're eating for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks for at least two weeks. 10 to 14 days, um, a lot can happen with your um, how you feel, with your mood, with your motivation. A lot can happen in that 10 to 14 days that can really get you um, moving in the right direction more quickly. So figure that out. And then um, clean out the cabinets, get rid of all the junk that you have no control over. So if there's something in the house that you could care less of and that it really doesn't tempt you, then probably not a big deal, even if it's a crappy item and, and you know you shouldn't eat it. I probably wouldn't get too hung up on that one if you really aren't tempted by it. But if there are foods that are in the house that are really very difficult for you to say no to and to pass up, then you've got to get those out of the house. You There's just... Or you've got to hide them in something that you can't see it. So that out of sight, out of mind thing is uh, um, beneficial. So really do try to get the things so that you, you just don't have access to it. So have your family members hide it in a, um, a plastic tub that you can't see through. Or put it somewhere else in the house that you have no idea that they don't tell you where. And then you can um, um, stay on track easier because you're not going to be tempted with the with the junk when you can't find it. Then when you are um, making your menu, you want to plan to shop the perimeter of the grocery store. And this will help you get off the addictive foods, which is the junk foods. So unfortunately, you know, package process junk is manufactured to be addictive so that we keep buying it. And I know that sounds so crazy, but think about it, you know, back in the 50s and 60s and, um, and even 70s and 80s, maybe not so much 80s, but at least, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, the, the time with smoking, it was just normal. You smoked in the doctor's office, you smoked on the hospital floors, you smoked in restaurants and movies. It didn't matter. You, everybody smoked. Um, and that was not seen as a, a negative thing. It was just seen as um, what people did. Same thing with the food manufacturing. Um, you know, these ingredients that they're using that really we don't have any idea what they do to our body and we really don't understand the long-term repercussions of them I think is going to at some point we're going to look back at the food industry like we look at the um, the tobacco industry or, or smoking cigarettes now um, it is it is going to get to that place because it's it's impacting everyone's health to such degree that it's increasing our healthcare dollars and our healthcare expenses. It's hard to care for people. Um, it's too expensive and, and people can't afford it because um, they continually eat the foods that um, are making that health condition worse. So, so I know that sounds so crazy, but 
you're just gonna have to do the research on your own and and look at what is really happening and and how loose the labeling laws are and how loose the um, regulation is with the food industry and how the government doesn't tell them what's acceptable the food industry is telling them what's safe and that's where it gets kind of scary so i think you have to quit relying on the food industry to you know provide your meals and you have to take accountability and say you know what i am going to buy fresh produce i'm going to buy raw meats and cook it myself i am going to adopt more healthy food choices that i'm going to have in my house or i'm going to plant a garden or i'm going to support the the farmers market or local farmers and purchase from them and that way i have control that way i know what is in my food and on my food. So, so you have to think a little differently because I know uh, many times um, we've not learned that. It is not something that you have grown up even associating. Um, the, the choice of foods that you're making is even impacting your, your health or your weight. So um, I'm not gonna say it's easy, but I am gonna say it's worth it. So make sure that you're shopping the perimeter and really just loading up on the produce and you're, you're buying the, the fresh meats and um, cooking them yourselves and you're avoiding those middle aisles. Um, you know, there's only a few things in those middle aisles that you need. You need a good olive oil, good coconut oil, some nuts and seeds and, you know, grind your own nut butters. You need some beans and lentils. But other than that, you can skip a lot of aisles at the grocery store. So the next one is um, avoid adding additional protein shakes and bars. And this I see all the time. They come in, they put on 20, 30 pounds or more, and they're back to get um, back on track. And they recently started drinking more protein shakes and protein bars. And it sounds good, and it sounds... Um, I, how I want to say, when you first have surgery, it's pushed to, to drink the protein shakes and protein bars. When you're further out, it's really not necessary. And just adding in protein shakes and protein bars aren't going to get you back on track and help you magically lose weight. That is not the key. Now, if you are eating tons of carbohydrates and junk carbohydrates or the refined carbohydrates, then um, changing them to more protein or healthy fats or just even the more healthy carbohydrates, you would get results. So you don't have to do it with protein shakes and protein bars. And if you're a year post-op, you really shouldn't need protein shakes and protein bars. So don't get confused in thinking that the magic with weight loss was all in the protein shakes and protein bars because unfortunately it is not and here's reality and, and here's why i say don't add protein shakes and protein bars um, as your main thing and meaning switching it to i'm having a protein shake for breakfast and lunch and i'll eat a meal um, not ideal in essence because when it comes to lab work, you get better results with what's going into your cells with whole real food. So I would prefer you to not load up on the protein shakes and protein bars by doing extras of them, um, but you know, and then avoiding food. I would rather you eat whole food and then have one for a snack if you need it. So leave it as that so that you're, you're really going towards the whole real foods and getting off the junk and then um, evaluating your, your protein um, goals. If you're hitting them with the food, then don't even bother putting a protein shake or protein bar in. If you're not hitting it with your meals, um, then add a protein shake or a protein bar, but don't rely on it thinking that that's the answer and the solution and start drinking two and three of them a day. Um, not necessary. One at most is, is kind of my good rule of thumb. 
Um, the next one is start taking all the required um, vitamin supplements. So vitamin deficiencies can play a role in your ability to stay on track because they impact your energy, they can impact your, your mood or just your, your motivation because um, it, those levels as you get deficient in vitamins and minerals will make a huge difference in your serotonin, which is your happy hormone, um, and, and all the balance of hormones that are happening, the vitamins and minerals are cofactors in making some of those. So if you are short or deficient in something, then you may not be making some of those that really control your energy or that control your mood, or that even allow you to sleep a full seven or eight hours at night. So they're important and they play a role in your body functioning like it's supposed to. So if you aren't taking your supplements and taking them correctly or um, taking enough of them, maybe you're taking some, but you're just, you're not hitting the numbers like you're supposed to, then get back on track with those and start taking those um, make that as your one thing that you focus on and then you'll feel like cooking your meals and going to the grocery store and buying all the things that you're supposed to um, when you're cooking for yourself. You'll feel like exercising and, and um, you know, putting in the effort with movement and, and you'll feel like, um, you know, you have the energy to do all this that, that it's going to take to to get back on track and stay on track. So, so that whole thing of pick one thing, maybe that's where you start. Um, I don't know, you get to decide, but it is a, a thing that can help you kind of um, improve the results of getting back on track. Then the next one is verbally tell someone your goals. So write them down, figure out what your strategy is, get a plan, figure out when you're gonna start, and to, to implement it and then talk about it. Tell people what you're working on and get them involved. And you've got to take the pressure off yourself of, but what if I fail? What if I don't finish? Or what if I just don't even start on that day? Remember, you are human and you are never going to be perfect. And it's okay to be wrong and to um, not start on time. It's okay to um, mess up and not finish. Um, the goal is that regardless of what ended up happening or does happen, that you try again. You put another date out there and you get another strategy that's tweaked a little bit or, um, you know, you enlist the person that you're talking to to help you and to encourage you and to do it with you. Um, but verbally talking about it really cements it in your mind to help you be more committed. So if you want the long-term results, then you've got to write it down on paper, get a plan and a strategy, and then talk about it. So don't let yourself feel scared to do it or get overwhelmed, you just got to take a chance and share it and um, just roll with it and just ha give yourself some grace and be patient with the whole process because you're going to mess up, but then you're going to get back up and you're going to try again and you're going to get better and you're, each time you're going to learn a little more about yourself and it will help improve that um, the odds so that in the future you aren't going to be in the same position. And then the last one is seek advice from professionals. Hire a personal trainer, hire a counselor, or hire a registered dietitian to help you be accountable or to financially commit to something. By paying money, you are you find yourself to be more committed to the program because you you're invested you are investing in yourself so by choosing to invest in you by paying 
or spending money with a trainer or, or a psychologist or a dietitian to help you hit your goals, um, you are more likely to show up, you are more likely to stay engaged and stay committed. So, so if you can't do it on your own, that's when you've got to say, you know what, I need help. Who cares? I need help. And it's okay to need help. You've got to just get to the point when you've got to identify, do I need a personal trainer cracking the whip to make me work hard enough? Do I need a personal trainer that I have scheduled with so many times a week that gets me to the gym? Do I need a dietitian that I can run my meal plan by, that I can um, get ideas and food choices and kind of a strategy, a whole program and plan that I can work with um, to do because I don't even know how to cook or I don't even know how to put a 14-day a meal plan together. Get help. Or if you are you know, mentally and emotionally struggling, with various aspects of, of getting back on track, then hire a psychologist and invest in yourself and help, help yourself by allowing a professional to help you find new strategies to cope with life. Um, if it was major life events that got you off track, you might need a psychologist to help you you know, learn new coping strategies to deal with life. And, and that's okay. So don't be afraid to just jump into that. And sometimes you need all three of them. Sometimes you need a trainer, a dietitian, and a psychologist. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to be willing to invest in yourself and be willing to invest in the time and the effort and the energy that it takes to get the results that you're really hoping for. There's nothing that is going to be simple and you probably will shed some tears, but you will find that it's so, so worth it in the end because you will have grown and changed during that process because you put in the time and effort. So, so don't be afraid to reach out um, to professionals to get the, the assistance that you need. So those were all seven of the tricks to help you get back on track. And I would just say, if you want something that is, um, you know, a, a program that's all put together, I would highly recommend our free 10 day back on track challenge. And it has the whole package deal with helping you kind of see how it is you are supposed to eat and we help you get off of the addictive foods, the, the junk and the refined carbohydrates that you may or may not be addicted to or kind of stuck on. It does help you get off of those. And, and then if you like that, then you can invest in yourself in our 30 day back on track class, which really does have a lot of information that will really give you strategies for long term that you can learn how to fix things on your own and learn better coping strategies with life and learn how to you know get seven to eight hours of sleep a night and learn how to um, you know learn the importance of exercise and how to make it a priority every day. So, so there's many things that we cover in, in, in both of those programs, but I will say the free 10 day challenge, there's no financial commitment that you absolutely have to do. There are optional ones that you can choose to, but I will say, you know, financially committing may make it more real to you and um, that may be something where the 30-day class is more beneficial in the long run because um, you, you're vested. You are vested and you are ready to take some action. And I will say in my 30-day class, I have a readiness to change questionnaire to see how ready you are to implement some of the strategies that it takes to get back on track. So, so I hope I've given you some ideas and I hope there's enough here that you can do it on your own and apply it in your life today and run with it. Um, if not, 
that's why we have the free 10 day challenge and we'll be having the, the 30 day back on track class that will be available if you need assistance. So we so hope you guys have all joined our Facebook group, Gastric Health Club. And if you haven't, please get in the group and um, that's where we have lots of conversations and discussions and, and try to interact with like-minded people so that you can stay on track long-term and not just um, during a 10 day or a 30 day. It's, it's every day there's, there's you know, interaction so that you can um, you know, stay on track and not get into those positions where you need help. Ooh.